Well, by now you are getting to understand that some countries are making Africa very proud in the world of football. But uh, this is a special program that also look at those that are really blazing the trail on the continent of Africa. Well, kudos to Ghana for that uh, whitewash of, uh, you know, uh, Egyptian national team. Now the pharaoh that we saw, like uh, so many people have said, we shall see them no more. In Brazil. Well, welcome to Trailblazers Africa. I'm not presenting sport. I'm actually on Trailblazers Africa today. My name is Moses Opade, and today I've got someone uh, who represents uh, the youth, who represents the, the middle age, also represents the elderly because he is a traditional leader. He actually communicates with every respect of, you know, uh, these people. He was made an ambassador by United Nations uh, for his contribution to eradicating poverty amongst the people, which makes him one of the trailblazers. Like, I have always searched my searchlights to look for people who have done cr- greatly well. So, he has done so well. He's an ambassador of uh, United Nations for poverty alleviation. He is also a doctorate uh, degree uh, holder, honorary doctorate from a ministry. He's a theologian and he is also a traditional leader. He's the Eze, the first Ezendigbo of Ghana. The f- Ezendigbo of Ghana, the first I have is Irish. He's a doctor ambassador Chukudi. Uh, he has I'd like to welcome you to Trailblazers Africa. Well, thank you, Moses. How are you doing today? Great. Uh, good to have somebody like you on this program uh, for what you have done for, you know, uh, to humanity and the rest. But I'd like to find out from you, uh, as a young chap, you know, growing up, what, what, was it that easy? Now you have, some people have recognized what you're doing. You've been given a doctorate degree. You've been given an ambassadorial, you know, uh, honor. But was it that easy, you know, coming up uh, as a child? It wasn't easy at all. I came up from a very poor family. I have uh, uh, a poor father that he was a teacher and a poor mother that also was a farmer, I mean a a farmer. And uh, I didn't get it easy when I was growing up. I I really struggled before uh, I get to where I am today. Uh, a lot of people uh, thought I came from a very um, wealthy family, maybe from uh, uh, a golden spoon, but it's not how it is. I came from a very poor family, uh, but I thank God for today. Yeah, uh, at that growing stage, was there any time you felt like not really pushing forward because of the discouragement, because of the situation around you, that perhaps will, will, will help a child, a younger person watching you right now. I've never been discouraged before in my life. That's great. Because I know God so much. I came from a very good Christian family that we know that tomorrow is better than today. Mm. We've been taught that by our parents, that tomorrow is better than today. So I've never been discouraged before in my life. I know that uh, wherever I am passing through as I'm growing, my tomorrow will be better than today. So I've Mm. never been discouraged at all. So you, were, you, you kept pushing, you kept moving, you kept... Exactly, I keep pushing. I keep pushing. I'm still pushing till today, till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but uh, anyone who sees you now will definitely know that uh, this perhaps, permit my word, is not a struggling guy, as would have been said. When was the turning point? The turning point started uh, um, here in Ghana because... Um, uh, after my school, I came to Ghana, started bringing goods here in Ghana, um, selling a whole lot of things, calculators, uh, uh, vehicle parts, and all that, even clothes from Nigeria. You know, those days, a whole lot of things is being brought from Nigeria. Um, a lot of people now go to China, go to Dubai, and all that. But those days, things that are sold here in Ghana, they bring them all from Nigeria. So I started bringing things, items here in Ghana to sell. Mm. So along that line, um, I was able to see that this land is a fertile land. It's a land that uh, I'm going to uh, make a better ends meet. Mm. It's a land that I need to decide to live here and, uh, uh, you know, change my life to a better one that is not what the way I'm expecting to, you know, be in Nigeria. So luckily for me, I set up a business here in Ghana, and uh, the turning point of my life started from here, hmm. which, by its grace today, I'm enjoying it. 
by the grace of God today yeah. is enjoying it and uh, he is also a traditional leader. Let's take a look at that. Good. Is a ship. How did it come about? If, if, if you would not... I know it's going to be a long one, yeah. but maybe let's just make it uh, brief. Okay. Because yeah. people want to ask, why having that in Ghana? Okay. Yeah. First of all, um, having that in Ghana is because of uh, the traditional institution of Ndebo. Okay. Because we the Igbos, if you can remember, uh, from the after the the, the the war in Nigeria, the Biafran war in Nigeria, every Igbo man traveled out of the country to survive for ends meet because uh, the war really affected all the Igbos. That is the eastern part of Nigeria. So most people leave their various homes below 10 years. Hmm. Some leave their various homes below 15 years and 20 years. Some are in the U.S., some are all over the world. And you know, we the Igbos, we are people that would so much believe in tradition and culture. So because all these things are happening, people doesn't know where they are coming from. Again, the culture of where they are coming from, the tradition of where they are coming from. So... Um, our father, that we look at him as a father of the Igbos, that is Dim Chuku Emeko Dumogu Juku, being the, the, the leader of the Biafran War, look at it that uh, a time has come when we need to let our people know where they are coming from. When we need to let our people know that the tradition and the culture of the Igbo is all fading away. We need to bring back the tradition and the culture back. According to what he explained in one of his interviews, he made us understand that one of his trips that he went to the U.S. to United Nations, I mean to uh, United States, the, yeah, United States to New York, uh, to meet one of his old friends that they fought the Biafran War together. And this man is a man that has so much love tradition and culture. But when he got there, surprisingly to him, this man, the, 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 the first son of the man is just wearing his trousers below his waist. And he came and said hi. Because the father called him to come and say, to come and greet the old man that he fought the Biafran War together with him. He came and he said hi with two of his ears pierced or with I mean, uh, earrings, earrings and all that. So the old man looked at this and said, man, this is not how true son of Igbo should be or should behave like. And he asked the father, why do you allow your children to be like this? He said, it's the culture of where they are. That is the American people. He now sat down by himself and, and said, I think it, the time has come where we need to carry our culture, our tradition to our people where they are. Because has found out that people are not going home the way they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. They're not getting closer with the tradition people. They're not getting closer with the culture of the individual. He now decided that the best thing that we're going to do is to establish what we call a Zibo in diaspora. That is the king of the Igbos in diaspora. And uh, it's by this king of Igbos in diaspora we'll be able to bring the culture and the tradition to the doorstep of the, our people. Mm -hmm. And you know, we the Igbos, we love tradition so much, we love culture so much. So that's how it started. Now, coming to me myself, um, you know, when you are doing things to your people, your people will love you. When he, the problem of your people is your problem, your people will love you. When you have the passion for your people, your people will love you. Myself, I'm somebody that I have passion for my people. The problem of my people, the Igbos, and all Nigerians, not only the Igbos, are my problem. Looking at the time I came to this country to today, so the opportunity of um, Ezebo in Ghana came up. And uh, my people, the Igbos in Ghana, looked at me and said, he's not giving the title to anybody is the issue, but giving the title to somebody who has the passion for people, somebody who can think about his people, mm. somebody who can, who can give his time for his people, that I think uh, uh, you are the person that going to take us to that promised land of the culture. And that is how it came to me. Your Highness, uh, my research also showed that uh, you have a school where you, you, you don't collect money. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. That you fed over 1,000 people. And uh, I want to be sure those informations are correct. Uh, is it true? That you One, this? Wonderful, it's true. And uh, even you can even have one of my centers very close to you here in Dansuma, you can assess it. What happened is this, like I said, I uh, tried to let you, about, let you know about the, our father, Dima Dume about our tradition and our culture. Myself sitting down here today, my wife is a Ghanaian. 
Okay. Your wife is a Ghanaian. Wife is a Ghanaian. Okay. Likewise, many of our people here, their wives are from different uh, backgrounds. Yeah. Even, even the, 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 we have people that have core Igbo wives, but their kids are not speaking the language of the Igbo. You know, sorry to say this, we the Igbos, we like imitating some good things. We like imitating a whole lot of things. We want to speak like your Igbo. We want to, we want to, you know. Oh, Igbos are the Obronis. Yeah. The Obronis, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whites, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, a lot of people today, their kids, they cannot speak the Igbo. They don't know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Some would say, my mommy and my daddy said, I'm half Ghanaian, half Nigerian. My mommy said, my daddy is from Nigeria. Have you been to your country before? You say, no, once like that, we went to Nigeria and all that. They don't even know where they're coming from. They don't even know the meaning of the Igbo, where they're coming from. And I decided that one of the things that will make our people to know where they are coming from, to know the culture and the tradition, is to establish Igbo speaking school. And that Igbo speaking school is where we're going to teach the children the language, the culture, and how to read the language, how to speak the language, how to write the language of the Igbo, and the culture and the tradition of the Igbo. Because if we can, today, Looking at my age, if I can stay the next 50 years, that means the culture and the tradition in me will live the next 50 years with me. Then the kids we are giving birth to them today, if they're going to live the next 100 years, it means the tradition and the culture will live for the next 100 years, right? So for that reason, I decided to open, the, open up Igbo Speaking School. And this Igbo Speaking School I opened up is free education. Because uh, most of the times when you try to bring people into the level of... Uh, um, pay school fees for your kids to come and learn the language, they might be discouraged. But for them not to be discouraged, I made it free education for all children to come and learn the language. Together with the wives that will get married to here in Ghana that don't speak English, some are Liberians, some are Sierra Leoneans, some are Bini people, some are Yorubas, married to Igbo men. We'll have over 620 kids. And we have Six, 620 children. Poopies. As we speak now. Yeah, as we speak now. We have over 39 adults at the Nibu Speaking School. And we have a lot of centers. We have uh, a center in Dansuma here. We have a center in Newtown. We have a center in Seco. We have a center in uh, Domi Kwabunya. We have a center in Spintex. We have a center in uh, Kasua. We have a center in Spintex. All of about 14 centers so far. And we're extending more and more outside Accra. We're extending to Tamale very soon. We're extending to Kumasi very soon. We're extending to Techima very soon. We're also yeah. extending to Aflawo very soon. Now, so, meaning that whoever is not an Igbo might not benefit? No, you will. After all, people go to school to learn Spanish. We're speaking English today. It's not our culture. Is English our language? It's not our language because we learn it in school. That is why we can speak English today. So you can as well, speak, you can as well go to Igbo school and mm. learn how to speak Igbo. You might love the culture. You might love to speak Igbo, and you be among the students there. We don't want to know your age, whether you are young, you are old, you are whatever. But the language is what is key. What what I want to I want that language to remain. I don't want that language to be a feathered language or the culture. Now you 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 said something that really interests me on this program. That is the culture of where we are coming from. Most people are beginning to not even forget now to cancel it. Some people don't even see anything good in their own culture. They think, like you said, speaking like a white man, behaving like a white man. Uh, today you see a typical African guy. I, I don't know whether that is part of our culture, but you are a traditional leader. You should be able to know that. Putting our trousers below our buttocks. I don't know. Maybe that is part of our culture. Piercing our air and putting, you know, two, three, four, five men. And uh, we begin to showcase this to the rest of the world. Now, how has that really affected, you know, us as Africans? Um, coming to African culture, um, some Africans, it's not every African people uh, uh, cannot pierce their ears. Like if you go to Kenya, there are some certain rural areas in Kenya, you, you see them on television sometimes, they pierce their ears. That is their culture. And there are some certain things they're not supposed to do in place on uh, uh, the white, the Englishman culture. Mm -hmm. But for where I'm coming from, the Igbo people, we don't pierce our ears. We don't put our trousers below our waist. We don't do that. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, seeing young girls today wearing a very short, uh, panty, 
uh, in the street, walking around the street. We, the Igbos, the hardcore Igbos, we don't take it. We don't like it. Even the Yoruba people I know, they don't take it. The houses, they don't take it. But today, because of uh, the situation of the global situation, people are getting into that, that kind of uh, culture, which is not our culture. It is not bringing the image of the Africans, an African very well. It's not bringing the image of where you're coming from very well. And I know that all these things is because the language is going away. Hmm. Because there's no culture without language. It is your language that will make you know to, your, to, to know your culture and your tradition. But when you are speaking English over your culture, you cannot get it well. But when you are speaking your local language with your culture, you'll be able to behave like your people. So we, the Africans, more especially we, the Igbos, from that part of the world, being the eastern part of Nigeria, that is not our culture. And the me as the traditional ruler of the Igbos, I am seriously concerned about my own culture, my own tradition. And uh, I'm also extending this to other traditional rulers that not from the part of the Igbo land, but Yoruba, Uza, Ganyas, and all that. Because I had, um, I had a few discussions with uh, one of the kings here in Ghana, and uh, when I told him, because um, there is a place right now by his grace, uh, quite 250 plus of land along the Flower Road, where we want to establish Igbo village in Ghana. And also oh. want, yes, want to build Igbo school there and all that. When I was uh, talking to the king of uh, uh, Odningo on that, he sat down very quiet and he was just looking at me. He said, Your Highness, this thing you're establishing, believe me, that in their own land, the Ghana land, the lot of people are not also behaving how they're supposed to behave as the traditional people. The language is also getting away. People are not speaking the Ghana language and all that. That what you are doing, I think he's also going to adopt that within his own system and all that. So it means we are not holding upon only the Igbo, Igbo culture and tradition. We also want to ex express these things to other part of uh, the world. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, within the Africa and West Africa, precisely. Now, you, you were made an ambassador by United Nations on yeah. poverty alleviation. Yeah. When did that come? And uh, what are the other things that the United Nations you know, saw in you before giving you that title? Okay, first of all... Um, um, I believe that before you can call me on this stage, you've been able to, uh, you know, study more about me, know who I am, and uh, know what I can do and what I cannot do. United Nations also, uh, you know, their eyes is all over the world. When you are doing well, they are spotlight on you, okay? And then they, they, they have seen my profile, and they have made a lot of inquiries about me, and they have seen how best I am doing to help my people. Right in my own village where I'm coming from, I have widows I pay, I take care of them monthly. I have students I'm paying school fees for them. It's just after the, the free education roaches, I mean, the, the executive governor of Imo State, you know, established uh, free education in Imo State. Uh, I stopped paying school fees for those I'm paying school fees for. All these things are help to the humanity, help to alleviate poverty. I have also empowered the whole lot of people for their various businesses, those that are in trading, those are in um, handwork, maybe mechanics and all that. I've helped a whole lot of people. So, and that is uh, part of the poverty elevation. And the United Nations want to encourage me for me to do more and more to help many more other people. I've, uh, I've uh, extended uh, my kind gesture to a lot of uh, um, um, motherless baby some. Uh, a whole lot of motherless baby some here in, in Accra, Ghana, even apart, I mean, Outside of Kragana, both uh, the School of Blind, the School of Deaf, Adams, and all that. If you go there, get the whole lot of information about me. I've helped a whole lot of people, and I'm doing more to, you know, elevate poverty where uh, our masses are. So, United Nations have seen all these things, and uh, they want to encourage me more. And uh, based on that, uh, the ambassador uh, position uh, okay. for yeah for poverty elevation came. Now, you are doing all this. Uh, your wife, your children. Do they really give you support? Because if you, if I will listen to, and I want to also judge by all you have said now, one will say, with the home front not be lacking, you know, giving everything you have to humanity, paying school fees, giving free education. What is left for the people at home? God bless you. The Bible by us understand that uh, 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 God bless those that that do what that gives. That gives. If you were a giver, you will never lack. You should know that. 
you will never lack. God will never allow you to lack because um, the manner of heaven fell those days, not today, centuries ago. The manner today that can fall for human beings, me and you. So if God knows that I am a manner to people's life, I am a manner to less privileged people, he will never allow me, you know, he will never allow uh, my giving to be a dry season. He will always put me in an in a, in a, in abundant season so that I will be able to give more. So to me, it's never affecting me at all. Rather, I'm giving more and more. And uh, the question again you ask, uh, I thank God so much. He gave me a wonderful wife, a woman that understands the need of the people, a woman that, that, that has the same heart that God has given to me. I think uh, sometimes I tell people that uh, God knows that uh, this is what I'm going to be, and he gave me a woman that also reason like the same way I reason, that do the same way I do. She even gave, sometimes she even gives more than me. So um, if you ask people that know me, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, people that come to the palace and all that, nobody will come to the palace without eating. When I'm there, I'm not there. My wife will make sure everybody's okay. So God has given me a woman that reason and think like me. And uh, the children that God, that God gave to me also, they are wonderful kids. Um, my children, uh, I, I think they're going to give more than me because uh, they can give their friends the last thing they have. If you see where they are packing their clothes, I give other kids uh, that comes around them. You'll be surprised and say, hey, sometimes I buy new things for them. If I come back from my brother and all that, they will dash them all. If I say, hey, why you guys, I just bought this is new. You say, daddy, but you're going to buy another one for us. So I think they're going to give also more the way I do. So I don't think that my home I don't think that uh, uh, my home is complaining. Nobody's complaining in my home, but rather they are happy. <laughs> well, nobody's complaining at home, so I want to say thank you to the mama in the house because uh, if a man is doing all you're doing and the woman is not giving support, yeah. uh, before you know what is happening, the woman will sabotage all the effort of the man. But you've been talking more of God, more of God. Uh, and uh, one we also want to ask, a traditional leader talking God like this, uh, are you also a, a bishop or a pastor? Guys, I, I'm not a bishop, I'm not a pastor, but, <laughs> but I, I, am, I am a child of God. I'm a believer. Uh, I always tell people that, that the position that God has given me today, being a royal highness, being a traditional leader, is a ministry to me. Because the reason why I say it's a ministry is uh, um, I'm, I'm assisting a lot of people for many problems. Like before I came to your interview this morning, if you ask my elders, they would tell you, people are, people are in the palace as if, uh, as if they came for church. Because people come with so many problems of all kinds. Are all these only Nigerians? Both Ghanaians, Nigerians. Remember, being a, uh, my wife is a Ghanaian, I'm married to Ghanaian. I'm also a part of the people. So people come with different problems and... Uh, we, we do our best to solve their problems the little we can. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's also a ministry that we are running. And uh, today, anything you are doing without God, believe me, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. the, the, the time has gone when people depend in a fetish, when people depend in a way of uh, worshipping idol and devil and all that. Uh, what I believe today is... Uh, uh, when you have faith in God, because He's the creator of all things, He's the creator of even even the the, the fetish, the, the 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 gods and whatever. It's God that created them all. So if you have faith in Him, that means the power you are operating is above all powers. Mm. So with that reason, uh, um, uh, um, everything will be possible for you anyway. So. Well, I think I cannot confirm because one of my crew uh, just saw you and said, "Oh, we met at one church." I said, "Oh." How come? And, uh, well, that, that shows that you are, you are not a pastor, not a bishop, but you are also into ministry, what you are doing. Yeah. But the ministry gave you a doctor, an honorary doctorate degree. Yeah. So how did that come? I mean, how, how did it come? Because also I, I, I'm a, I, I do my best to support that ministry uh, when they are in need. Um, when they are putting up that uh, theological college, I also contributed a lot to make sure because I'm somebody that... I invest in I invest in, in kingdom of God. I did my best to help them to make sure that the that theological college is uh, established. Um, the little I can, sometimes they come to me for various problems. I also do that, so uh, they decided to honor me with that uh, 
honorary doctorate degree. Yeah. So many titles coming in. Uh, that's to tell you that if you're doing very well, so many people are just by one corner watching you. You may not know that people are really studying and watching what you are doing. Uh, they have watched him. It was, you know, picked by each people to be the first Asian Digbo of Ghana. And he also picked by the United Nations uh, as ambassador for, you know, poverty alleviation, a doctor, honorary doctorate degree by a ministry, meaning that he has been doing all he has said. And then uh, you, 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 you practically live for people. Yeah, that is, uh, that's how God created me. Wow. <laughs> How many people are created like that? Remember, I brought a woman who adopted 50 children one day uh, on this program. These are the things that Trailblazers Africa try to look at and then bring you to the world for people to see and then appreciate what you are doing. How many of you knew or still know that uh, the Gar Traditional Council has also seen him? All this will be coming your way after this break. We'll go for this short break and when we come back, how did the Gar Traditional Council see him and what have they brought to him? All of this will trash out after this break. We'll be back. Right, welcome back from that break. I hope you're still enjoying your day. And uh, my guest, no doubt, has been able to probably pass one of two information across to you. Before we went on that break, I said the GAT Traditional Council. I got this information about a week ago that the GAT Traditional Council also saw you. For what again, Your Highness? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, this is the first in history of the Igbos in Ghana. And I think all tribes in Nigeria that live in Ghana. Um, the Ghana Traditional Council induct me, induct the Igbos, because uh, I stand for the Igbos. I am not myself. My people have chosen me as their king, but God in heaven has made me a king because it's God that makes it a king. He's not a human being. It's by his choosing that human being will be able to support you. But without his choosing, no, nobody can support you. The same way, the Gat Traditional Council have seen the good things I'm doing for the Igbos and uh, how I carried my people, the Igbos, along and uh, how I, I, I advise my people to respect the tradition and the culture of the land where we are living. Uh, before also, before I was crowned by my people, the Igbos, because this is a foreign land, you cannot be a king in one's land without the the approval of the owners of the land without the approval of the traditional institution of the land it's just like uh, you're an ambassador you came to for you came to, you are posted to a country without the approval of the president of that country you will not operate as an ambassador so as a traditional person you cannot operate as a traditional person without the approval of the traditional institution of the land so the Gar traditional council approved my stool that was on 30 August 2012, last year. Then, uh, on the night of uh, this month of uh, October 2013, they now inducted me into their system by giving me a permanent seat into the Guard Traditional Council. That means <clears throat> I am part of the ruling, traditional ruling making in Ghana, that is the Igbos. Not only me, because this is a, this is a, a wonderful uh, opportunity, a wonderful seat, a wonderful honor to the people of the Igbos till eternity, till eternity. Yeah, after we finish growing old and old that died, the people that are behind us are also going to take up with that. So uh, they have seen the good thing I do, I'm doing for my people and uh, the respect I give to the law of the land, the traditional institution of the land, and they decided that they're going to induct me and also they're going to give me a permanent seat with the, the traditional council. So you have a seat with them now? Yes, so I am part of them. Whatever meeting they do, I am part of them. Whatever decision they do, I am part of them. It's not only here in Accra. It's, it's, it's for the whole Ghana. 
because uh, is uh, is uh, is in conjunction with the ministries and also uh, uh, um, the, 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 the 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 chief tenses in Ghana. So yeah, and you know this is uh, this is the capital city of the land. Mm. So um, I, I believe that whatever is approved here, both in government sector, traditional sector, is also. Uh, it's also acceptable by the people of the, of the country. Now, how do you intend to use this office to probably project a good image of the nation you are coming from? Now, you are opportuned now to be part of the GAT Traditional Council, which, of course, by my own standard, I still believe that the traditional leaders uh, should still be given more respect because they are dead until death do them part. And then, unlike the president or the governor or leader or political leader who have a specific time by the constitution of the land, in, I mean, in, in the case of those of you who are traditional leaders, no constitution will kick you out except uh, if there are some other reasons uh, that the councils will have to sit on. Now, this makes it an opportunity for you to probably make uh, the image of where you are coming from a better one. What plan do you have? in that area, in that respect? There are a lot of plans. First of all, remember that uh, we have established Igbo Speaking School. This Igbo Speaking School is also bringing uh, a very good integration between Nigerians and Ghanaians because mm -hmm. uh, most our wives are Ghanaians. They also attend the same school. Some of our women married to Ghana men, they attend the same school. Uh, that is one. Two, we also gonna arrange a lot of a traditional uh, workshop. Okay. And this workshop will be between Igbo traditional rulers and Ghana traditional rulers. Because we need to understand ourselves. When you look at African culture, it's similar. African culture is similar. The only problem there little is just the language. Mm. But when we are bringing our people together, then we learn from you, you learn from us. Now, there is a program that I'm putting up very soon that we're going to come up with it. You know that today, when you look around the world, they will, if people, if somebody is sick now, they say, take him to China, take him to India. They have good medicines. They have that. They have that. Various families there are known by various traditional um, medicines. In China today, all these chairs, all these things are produced in China. Some families are known by this. Some families are known by this. Here in Africa, before, before the white people came here to bring English medicines and all that, various families here also are known with various things. Some, are, some can give uh, herbal medicines. <clears throat> some can prepare this kind of traditional way as well. Some are best in bead. Some are best in this wooden cap and all that. Some are best in... Uh, uh, um, traditional way of painting houses and all that. But today, because the technology of the whites has taken those things away, and we, the Africans, we are not going back to where we are coming from. And the people that can bring us back to this are traditional rulers. You know why? Because uh, today, my president might not know that my grandfather... If, okay, let me leave by, by my president, because it's too far to the village where I'm coming from. My governor today in Imo State will not know that my generation of my grandfather, we are the best in pile medicine. Pile. You know the pile? Mm -hmm. My generation, my grandfather, he's the best in local pile medicine. If you are sick, if you have pile, my grandfather treats you, you cannot go for the operation of the pile anymore. Four days it will just clear well. But today, uh, the, the, the language of that family, everybody's living in America, in U.S., in Ghana, and all that. And that particular good thing that God, has, God is doing to people through us is just going away. Now, my governor might not know those things, but the traditional ruler of my town, we know that starting is from that family, right? Likewise, other families. So when we are bringing the traditional rulers together, between the Igbo traditional rulers and Ghana traditional rulers, we'll be able to have workshop that we would know that there are a lot of things that we are lacking. We are chasing something up there, but we have a better thing down here that can give us money, mm. that can bring out the culture of our people, that can bring out, <clears throat> that can contribute, you know, um, 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 financial increment to our people, that can create jobs for our people. Then these traditional rulers 
we now started thinking about how to go back home, bring all these people together. We we'll now go back to where we are coming from. We can, we can, we can, you know, inject many more money in this and get exactly what we want. So this is also going to bring us together with what we are today. And again, here in Ghana, where we are living, remember that this is not our country. It's a foreign country where we are. Our people might not respect the law of the land, especially the traditional institution of the land, because they left home when they are kids. They don't know what culture is all about. They don't know what um, uh, um, tradition is all about. But with, with, the, with the traditional institutions that we have established today, why they are coming to the palace, they are now understanding that culture and tradition is what you're supposed to respect. Mm. They will understand that elders, you must respect them. They will understand that there are some certain things that you will do is out of the world of Africans. So when we are teaching them that in the palace, they will also use that automatically to respect the, the traditional law of the land. So these are the way that these are the things that I am doing that will be a benefit mm -hmm. to the people where we are. Mm -hmm. Let our people respect the people where we are living in their land. Let our people know that here is not our country. Let our people know that if you are in someone's land, you must give that person that respect that, you know, accommodating you in his country is not easy mm -hmm. because it's not your land. But when we don't teach them this way, they will not understand it because we the traditional rulers, we stand by the truth. We are not like, this is not a political seat that you come and um, maybe after one day or two days or one year or two years, you're going to get out of it. But it's a seat that you're going to leave, you're going to stay there till the day God, God call you back home. So while you are there, you have to create a very good legacy mm -hmm. by giving your people good directions on how to live where, where, and how to you know, live together with those we are living in their land, how to respect them, how to respect your elders and all that. So these are the good things that we also want to, the country will benefit from us. Again, is um, we also, based on your yeah, question yeah, again. Your, your Ines, if I, I, it shows that you have so many programs. Yeah. If I should allow you to unleash all this now, <laughs> uh, I'm sure my time will not be able to, to accommodate. Because you've mentioned almost four. You still want to say and. I, I, don't, I don't want the, the and will continue. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that should tell you, yeah. uh, viewers at home, that well, you, when you have somebody, I mean, when you have something to offer, you don't think about it because the thing is already part of you. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let me ask this because the time is almost going. Now, uh, how can you traditional leaders uh, encourage peace in the society? Because that is one area uh, that probably so many things have been, I mean, are lacking. The leaders, the, the political leaders, like you said, uh, is that that they support this part because they belong to this political party, but you are a traditional leader over everybody. You don't belong to any political party. Even if you belong to any, that is known to you inwardly. Now, how, how would you want to use this platform, especially now that you, are, you have a seat among the GAT Traditional Council, to encourage peace amongst you know the younger generation, the Nigerians in Ghana, uh, the, the, the Ghana you know, traveling to Nigeria and what have you? Okay. There's two things that can bring peace, and that's what I preach every day. Respect and love. Mm. Respect and love. My brother, if I respect you today, I don't think that we're going to fight. If I love you, we're not going to fight. But if I don't love you, we'll fight. You understand? Mm. And uh, sorry to say this to my, to my fellow brothers and sisters that are politicians. It's difficult for you to see a politician preaching for, for, for love and uh, respect. respect. But we traditionally lost what we preach always is love and respect. Because even the Bible made us understand that they, we understand in the Bible that the highest law in the Bible is love. When you love your brother, you don't fight him. When you love your brother, you're not going to tell him, shut up. Because when your brother offended you, you say, my brother, please come. What you did, I don't like it. He's okay, I'm sorry. And if he say, I'm sorry, the problem is over. Right? Mm -hmm. That's some way you respect him also. But if these two things are lacking, we keep having problems. So this is what mm. the traditional rulers should be preaching on. And that's what myself, I always preach on. If you ask everybody that comes to my palace, they will tell you that every time what I preach is love, respect. Because the love and respect that will bring peace. And this is the things also I'm going to let, I'm also letting my other fellow traditional rulers my seniors in the traditional kingdom, 
the traditional ruling um, uh, um, society to also know, to also to add to the wisdom that God has given to them to rule their people. Because before God will give, make you a traditional ruler, I think uh, God saw something in you. Mm. So they, 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 there is, they, are, they, are, they have their own wisdom that God has given to them. So I'm, I also appeal to them to add this to their own wisdom so that we'll be able to live in peace. With all these problems will be over. Because if we love ourselves, problems will not come. We'll preach for love. Nigerians will love Ghanaians. Ghanaians will love themselves. Ghanaians will love Nigeria. And all over, it will just spread that way. Now, what is your most memorable day? The day that anytime you remember that day, you feel like jumping on the street and begin to dance? Um, first of all... <laughs> oh, there are so many of them. First of all, I, my first memorable day, memorable day is um, uh, the day that God in heaven made me a father. The day I had my first child, my first fruit. Because that confirmed that now I'm a man now. <laughs> um, because my, my daddy and my mommy has brought me to the world for me to also um, give out to the world. And I had my first child. That day, I was very happy. I said, oh gosh, is that my baby? Myself? And everybody said, yes. That is the first day of happiness in my life. And many others. And again, um, the day of my coronation, there is a, a statement uh, made by my uncle that came to represent my father. He said that a history has repeated itself. If you can go to net and study more about King Judge of Opopo, is a, is a known history all over the world, King Judge of Opopo. Mm -hmm. King Judge of Opopo is the same father and the same mother with my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather is their last one. So my uncle said that History has repeated itself again. If somebody from my family can be a king in the other part outside, yeah. and that throne is still running forever, and this has repeated again from the same family, that it means that God is really on throne. So, and that is uh, another happiest day for me. That the history that we are, we are reading when we are kids, the story that we know has again repeated itself, and it's repeated through me. So I think it's a happy day for me. And many other things that, that has brought um, happiness to me. Now, uh, as traditional leaders, you are, you, and then belonging to the God Traditional Council, you also have some access to leaders uh, in the political areas. Uh, what would you be telling them? What, what can we continue to you know, project in Africa that will cement and solidify our relationship as one people. Okay. <clears throat> um, first of all, Africa, this continent of Africa is well blessed. There are tsunami all over the other part of the world. No tsunami in Africa. Africa will have oil, will have gold, will have demo, will have mica, will have uh, timber, will have uh, all things you can talk of. People are coming from other parts of the world to come and assess these things in Africa, but we have them. Mm -hmm. Now, what I am preaching to my people, I am preaching to the leaders is, let us please use what we have to develop our continent, Africa. A lot of us today, you go to a port, thousands of us are traveling to abroad, traveling to America and all over the world. As if the best thing is in that country. But the best thing is here in Africa. The good and the diamonds and everything we're wearing today, we get them from Africa. Even the aeroplane we are flying with, the best, the best oil is here in Africa. The best material even to produce the aircraft is here in Africa. But we have leaders. Now, we, we also get money from the, pro, I mean, the, the minerals that God gave to us. We also take them to the other part of the world. To do what? Can't we use that money to develop our country so that those white also come here to work in our country for we to become boss? 
not them becoming boss to us. Go there, see a whole lot of Africans cleaning floor. Some are doing whatever all kind of all kind of jobs that that we're supposed to <clears throat> be lord by ourselves here because of the things that God has given to us. So my plea to the political leaders is: they should please sit down, think on what God has given to us. If it's not possible for Africa to unite together, let every country in the continent of Africa unite within their political sector and develop Africa. Mm. You know, politics uh, is, a, is a game of interest. A lot of people, because somebody can now come because uh, um, a contexting president will tell him, if I win the election, I'm going to make you the minister of foreign affairs. I'm going to make you the minister of this. Then because of that interest, if you even ask him to kill somebody, he will kill because of that interest. Forgetting that our life is in the hands of God. The person might even die before the winning of that election. Mm. But think of your people. Think of even the children have given birth to. If you if you just died off right now, what are they going to be tomorrow? So let us not destroy ourselves or destroy what God has given to us. But let us come together and think on how to use what God, God has given to us mm. to develop Mother Africa. Mm. So that we will be comfortable in Africa. Mm. We will have a good road in Africa. My friend last time came from the U.S. He was with me in my car. When we are driving somewhere, he said, "Hey, your highness, the the the, the potholes is too much. How do you how do you manage to 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 service your vehicle? Because I know that this vehicle is a very expensive vehicle with all these uh, gallops and all that. That the, the shocks will just go off. That he have drove his car in America for five years without changing shocks and all that because the road is good, and it's not going to cost us anything to do the road." You understand what I'm saying? We have bitmen, we have everything, we have the, the, the gravels to do the, 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 the road here in Africa. But we don't do it. So if our people can come together, think of what we have, use it to develop Africa, I think that our country will be the best. Believe me, most of us living in, uh, in, 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 in the Western world will come back home. Because when we come back home, we become boss. People will work, will work under us. So my advice to uh, my my brothers and sisters, they are, they are political leaders, is they should think on what we have, use it very well, develop Africa, and yeah, bring our yeah, sons and before, back. Before I allow you to talk to your people right here in Ghana and uh, all over the world, I, I want you, uh, I want you, because the way you have spoken to the leaders quite interests me a lot. I want you to speak to the younger generation because they are the ones that will merge leaders tomorrow. Uh, there is this saying that don't call us leaders of tomorrow. We are leaders today. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't believe in leaders tomorrow. Mm. But then some people are younger. Uh, mm. Your experience as a young child, then when you told us that, not that you were from a very influential mm. or influence, uh, mm. family, but today God has made you and you are happy uh, where you are today. What, what would you want to tell the younger ones too that perhaps have opportunity of watching and hearing you today? Well, I will tell them first of all, they should know God. Because uh, if you know God, all things will be possible for you. That's one. Because if you see the young ones today, most of them are most of them engage themselves in smoking, in drinking, in living a rough life. Because they don't know God. If you know God, believe me, you're not going to engage yourself in the kind of lifestyle that will destroy you. Because uh, God told Jeremiah that before he was born, I knew you from your mother's womb. God knew us and he knew what we are going to be before, he gave, I mean, before our parents gave birth to us. So if we, will, if, we, if we will remember that word from the Bible, I think we will be able to live according to that directions and they will be able to be a better person tomorrow but if we don't know who god is believe me we will be making that mistake so the younger ones today they should know god they should work so hard because success is hard working if you are not hard working you can never meet success if you just put your hands in your trousers every morning, sitting down, playing Lido and all that, you know, gossiping and all that, believe me, you cannot make it. You will see people making it and you'll be envious of them. But when you're hardworking, be focused, be creative. When you are creative, you'll be able to meet the best thing for your future. So that's my advice to the younger ones. They should know God, be creative, hardworking, and all that things. Then, in that, based on your question again, in that, they are the features of tomorrow. And the features of today, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what our leaders are doing today, 
what our political leaders are doing today, we should as well look into that and uh, think about changes in that. Today, uh, those days, there's no glass table, right? It was a wooden table. Like today, we are sitting there in front of you with glass table. Before, this iPad is a very big, uh, something of a computer like television and all that. But I think somebody sit down, look at it and said, even if you melt this glass or whatever, we can do table, we can do laptop, we can, do, we can, we can compress this into this way. Creativity. They start creating and start changing. So the younger ones should also look at our, leading, our leaders today. The areas they are making mistakes. The areas they are not doing well. Mm. They can sit down and uh, inject good things in it. Okay. So, that, so that when their turn come in, they will be able to change, transform. Look at today, Kwame Nkrumah, <laughs> our father in Ghana. He did, he did very, very well. And the things that he did, looking at them now, some of them are old schools. And the current presidents coming up, coming up, coming up, they are doing better things also to add up to what he did. So that's also what I'm telling the younger ones, for them to be focused and they handle the position that God's going to give to them in future very well. So Let me give you the opportunity to just say hi to those you want to say hi to, because the signal just came yeah. that we should be rounding up on this program today. Okay. I know you want to have some message to your people. What message do you have for them? Before you um, salute that wonderful woman that is in your life. First of all, I'm saying um, thank you to um, all the Igbo community here in Ghana, from the president to all the executives and all the members of the Igbo community. And I'm also sending a very big thank you to my palace members, somebody like Chief Harrison Mba, Chief Chibata, um, Oben Naya, and the Chief Cosmas, and all of them. They are great people, Umwaki Beya, Mwachi um, Nemero, they are all great people. Um, and a whole lot of them, if I start mentioning their name, I think time is going to go. But I'm saying, this, a very, I mean, saying a very big thank you to all my Palash members, all you both living in Ghana, all you both living all over the world. I'm also saying a very big thank you to the president of Ghana, Nigeria High Commission, um, the chairman of the political party, and all Ghanaians that welcomed us here in this country because... It did not give us a very good welcoming. I don't think that we're going to live here. We're not going to say we are king in Ghana. We're not going to say we are traders in Ghana. We're not going to say we are working in the various institutions here in Ghana. It's because of the love they have for us. That is why they welcome us. So the people of Ghana, I say a very big thank you. And I say a very big thank you to all Nigerians. Long live Ghanaians. Long live Nigeria. And finally to the students. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, my lovely wife, uh, Liberty Ugeze. My wife, I say thank you, very big thank you to you. You are a woman that God has uh, destined for me to marry. Because um, I don't think uh, I would have been what I am today without you. It's because of you I am what I am today, by the grace of God. I so much love you, and I love the kids you have given, given to me, Angel, Choma, and China Meze. Thank you, baby. Thank you, my Lord. Wow. God bless you. Wow. I, I, I wish this is read in the church. Uh, there will be another smart chat come after this, you know, very wonderful recitation by, by His uh, Highness. Thank you so much for coming on Trailblazers Africa. God I hope you. Um, you really enjoy my stay. I mean, staying with me. It's a wonderful uh, discussion with you today. And uh, I wish you good luck, and I pray that um, your platform will be a better platform more than this mm. to promote uh, uh, the people of Africa and to let the whole world know much about uh, the Africans. God yes. bless you. Well, thank you so much, Your Highness. AZ Dr. Ambassador Chuku, the Yanacho, as my guest on the program. I want to say a big thank you to all of you that gave us your eyeball to watch this gentleman for just one hour. One hour is just like 10 minutes to me, if you ask me. But then we have to go. Thanks to all the production crew of ID Johnson. Uh, Rule, the man we call Prophet Agabus. Prophet Agabus actually prophesied that Ghana was going to win by five goes to one. But eventually, uh, I think his prophet Fessy had another one. Uh, Boydi is also part of the production, not forgetting Atto Morgan and Lord, and of course the editor himself, Alaji uh, Kufi Anna Awa. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Muzo Badi. By the grace of God, I'll be back again next week. Bye bye. bye.